Our third demonstration this evening is with Doug Bratz, presenting the email client Laurel. Doug is a fellow at Adobe Systems. Immediately on the heels of his time at Park, Doug became Adobe's first software employee, where he made many diverse contributions, particularly with PostScript. Please join me in welcoming Doug. The Alto was a combination of small computer, a network connection, bitmap display, and mouse. Email turns out to be the perfect application to use all of the Alto, from its user interface to read and write messages, through cooperating servers to transport the messages from one user to another. Michael Schroeder, Ben Wegbright, and Roger Needham began this project. I joined weeks in, and I quickly became responsible for all the interactive features that you see here. What you see on the screen is what a brand new user is instructed to type in order to learn how to use the Laurel program. It's amazing. The emulator that we have running on the Macintosh runs about five times faster than the real Alto. <laughs> Now, at Xerox, we did not invent email. I want to dispel that evil notion right now. <laughs> what we did was make it usable and inviting for everyone, not just hardcore computer people, but for executives, secretaries, lawyers, librarians, everybody. This display screen should look familiar to everybody in this audience, whether you use Laurel at Xerox or not. And the reason is that every email program that has been used since has borrowed from this model. I mean, could this be anything else than an email program? <laughs> what we have up here is a table of contents of messages that you've received. In the middle, we have an area where you can display the messages. And at the bottom, we have an area where you can uh, type in and edit messages you want to send to someone else. So we're absolutely brand new user. We know nothing except how to move a mouse. So by just looking at this screen, we see, hmm, OK, this says to start your tutorial session, point cursor at display and click the left mouse button. Well, we'll give it a try. Oh, we're starting to learn how to use this program. It tells us, among other things, that there are certain conventions that you already know from using Bravo. For instance, how to scroll. So we have exactly the same system with, the, with our uh, cursor over on the left edge. We can scroll up or down. We did our thumb uh, operation in a different manner. We actually put the thumb bar between the messages. But this somehow never caught on with the rest of the world. So it's an interesting artifact. Of, of what we did. So this will tell us that we can continue to read subsequent messages by just pointing at display again. And we're now going through all the messages in this tutorial file and learning how to use every aspect of the, of the program. Now there's one command here I'd like to draw your attention to, which you may already have focused on, there's a very peculiar word uh, right in the middle of the screen. It's called undelete. That's not English. 
But understand that this program made its debut with a population of people who were not computer people. If anyone here has a parent whom you've tried to teach a computer thing to, you would understand this. Because they all say, I'm going to hurt something. It, I'm going to break something. Well, to delete a message, you merely point at it and say delete. But it's not really deleted. It's just marked for deletion. If you made a mistake, you can undelete it. And this went a very long way in making this system very inviting for all the users. So we're looking at a self-documenting system. This is undoubtedly not the first self-documenting system, but I believe it's the most natural one. You're actually using Laurel to document itself. Now, let's start editing a message to send to somebody else. So I'll go down to the composed message window. Oh, maybe I want a little more room down here, so I'll just change the uh, size of the window. And we'll go in here and start typing some kind of text, like two score and five years ago. Well, that's what this is all about, right? We borrowed the conventions of editing from Bravo. The original version of Laurel used the modal editor that Charles and Tom uh, were demonstrating. They were showing you that one because apparently the emulator that we were using had a bug and it could not actually show the better editor, uh, which was the modeless version of Bravo. Uh, and of course, you all know how the modeless version of Bravo works because you know it as Microsoft Word. <laughs> now, oh, oh, I'm lying. <laughs> we put in a couple of other editing conventions. Uh, you saw the secondary con uh, editing, uh, the secondary selection technique from Bravo in the modal editor. Well, we put in a thing called shift selection. So if you're at a particular insertion point, all you have to do is go and grab something else with your selection while you're holding the shift key down. When I let up on the shift key, voila, it all gets copied. I don't know why this hasn't made it big, but <laughs> what can you do? Well, let's go, let's, you know, I'm starting to feel a little bit ornery, and I have, a, I have a real urge to send a different kind of message. So I'm going to, oh, I put it in the wrong place, so I'm just going to have to do uh, undo, and I really want this to be two, whoops. To all America, a distribution list I happen to have. <laughs> and I'm going to start typing uh, some, something in here. Um, and I'm, you know, maybe, maybe I'll put, make this about 140 characters long. <laughs> and and I'm, I'm a, about to pull the trigger and uh, hit the deliver button. But wait a minute. Um, everywhere the Alto went, Laurel went with it. And we developed a very large community of users. They weren't just computer people. Email prior to Laurel was confined to hardcore computer people. 
who were all of a particular culture. We wanted to use email to get our work done. But once everybody was using it, it turned out that people were using this in all kinds of new ways. And we discovered that there were a number of sociological phenomena that we had never seen before. Well, I cataloged quite a few of these phenomena, and I included them in the second version of the Laurel Manual, which you can actually get online. If you go to Amazon, you can pay somebody $65 for one. <laughs> Or if you just put it into Google, say Laurel Manual CSL-81-6, I believe there's a copy in the back of the room, you'll find some guy who's just got it in PDF and you can, cop you can download it. If you read chapter six, you'll see the world's first etiquette manual for internet communication. Well, you know, I guess I'll have to take my own advice and not push that deliver button. Just get rid of this thing. Of course, not everybody has read the manual. <laughs> now, I, I can't really show you much of this, but I do, would like to talk a little bit about this last command down here called run. This is a command that we put in for the last version of Laurel uh, called Laurel 6, which is the one we're showing up here. Oh, if you can read all of this little print, by the way, it looks like somebody named Taylor from Palo Alto is actually uh, operating this thing. Uh, now, the run command was a way to run other programs. It turns out that this particular individual, Taylor, always had Laurel on his computer. And sometimes he needed to do something else. So without having to leave Laurel, he could run another program. This is now called a plug-in. Uh, this, once again, probably not the world's first plug-ins, but really easy to use. Uh, the initial idea was to have a program where you could edit distribution lists. After all, that's a very email kind of thing. But one day, a certain individual named John Warnock, who was a researcher at Park, came to me and he said, you know, we have this little program called JAM, which stands for John and Martin, Martin being Martin Newell. And it was a program where you could describe a graphic image in a programming language. And you could send this text that described an image and somebody else could actually make the image. He said, wouldn't that be great if we could run this in Laurel and then we could send images to each other? So I worked with him, it took about an hour, and we had jam, jam.laurel running in Laurel and we were sending images to each other. I would like to point out that this little interaction, uh, as Rick Blaine said to Captain Raynaud, this was the beginning of a beautiful friendship. <laughs> but of course, that's a story for another symposium. So I'm just going to quit from this thing. Oh, I have to quit from, from, from uh, the run command and say thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Doug.